Hey, welcome to the Art of Code. My name is Mark Tyne. And what you see behind me here are some of the easing functions that we made in the last video in action. And um, I just played around with stuff for a bit longer and I came up with a bit more complicated easing function for a bounce. And so that's what I'm going to do in this video. Uh, I want to show you how to make a bounce uh, in a few different ways. So there's going to be the, uh, the simple version, the bit more uh, advanced version, and then the even more mathematical function, which is probably going to be in the next video because uh, it's going to be too long. But um, yeah, anyways, a lot of my patrons asked for, uh, like to see more math related videos. So this video is definitely for you if that's uh, what you're into. So, uh, oh yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please click subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, it's just a click, and it helps me a lot. Uh, so, so yeah, so if you wanna do that, that would be great, and let's get started. Uh, this is where I'm going to start. Uh, this, there's a link in the description of, uh, of, of this exact starting point on Shader Toy. So Shader Toy is just a website that I use to demonstrate this um, and that allows you to follow along. So uh, yeah, if you really want to learn this, then I would implore you to grab your laptop and do the same as what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go and close these things and um, and I'm going to get rid of these things, but I'm gonna first, uh, well, here, let me, let me just delete this and this, and then just stick with the center one. And I'm gonna make it green so that we can see it a little bit better. And we're gonna make this into a bounce, right? So I'm gonna go bounce over here, bounce. And uh, I used X before, but let's rename that because it's actually time. So let's rename it to T and T. And then this is going to be the bounce animation. Um, and then we're going to have to make a bounce function. So let me also get rid of this overshoot. We're not using it. So uh, and let's call this bounce. And it's going to take us an input, a, a coordinate. And then as an output, it's going to give me a bounce. So. Uh, how can we make a bounce? Um, well, let's go to Desmos, which is another great tool. Get rid of this stuff. Um, great graphing tool that you can use. Uh, it's free and uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, so, well, falling objects, so for a bounce, if you like drop a ball or whatever, falling objects uh, follow, um, uh, follow a, an acceleration that is based on a parabola on a something squared so uh, so we can use that so let's do that so this is a normal parabola here and I'm gonna turn it around uh, by putting a minus sticking a minus in front of it and then adding a one to move it up so now that's way that's one way to to make a parabola another way to make a parabola is to specify it uh, by where it crosses the uh, where it crosses the x-axis. So let's do that instead. So I'm gonna do one that crosses the x-axis at minus 0.5. Um, and so, uh, and so I write that as plus 0.5 over here and at plus 0.5, which is written as minus 0.5. And that's a bit confusing for people sometimes. Uh, but like, look at it. If I if I put 0.5 into it, like basically what like what what I have to do here is remap it to zero. So so if I point, put 0.5 into it, then I get 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5, which is zero. And similarly, if I put minus 0.5 into it over here, then this entire thing goes to zero. So that's why it's kind of opposite. So you got you you have to take care of that. Uh, so now we have a parabola like this. So we're going to turn it around, and I want to make it that it starts at one, because right now the highest point is 0 0.25. Uh, so I can just multiply this by four to have it over there. So that's my first bounce. And then I just make my second bounce. So it starts where my first bounce ended. So at minus 0 0.5 and x minus 0 0.8, let's say. And then I have to turn it around and scale it up. I can do it times 16, let's say. So that's my second bounce that matches up exactly against my first bounce. And then the third one I'm going to do 
uh, x minus 0.8 times x minus 1, because I wanted to end that 1. And then I'll turn it around, and then uh, times 8, let's say. So these are my three bounces. And if I just look at this on the interval from 0 to 1, and I just take the maximum of these three, then I have a nice bounce. So let's do that. Actually, let's let's get bouncy. Um, okay, so let's do that. So what I can do here is I can make a float uh, b1 for bounce 1. That is going to be uh, x plus 0.5 times x minus 0.5 uh, and then minus 4 times that. That was my first one. My second bounce is going to be minus 16 times x minus 0.5 times x minus 0.8 and my third bounce was going to be minus 8 times uh, x minus 0.8 times x minus 1. So these are my three bounces and I just have to return the maximum between those. So return max b1 and max b2 and b3. And the reason why I write it like this is because the max function only takes two, two input parameters. So first I have to take the maximum between these two and then the maximum between the winner of those and b1. Uh, all right, so let's see. Um, that there's a dot there that shouldn't be there. Okay, so now we have a bounce. Look at that, beautiful. Uh, well, it's bouncing the wrong direction, but that's not that's not too difficult to solve, right? I could just do a one minus, and then it's going to bounce the other way. All right, but let's try to visualize this a little bit differently. Uh, let's try to visualize it as an actual ball that is like bouncing like that. Um, so for that, first let me put in the x-axis. Um, and I already put in uh, the lines at, at the y, uh, where x is 0 and where x is 1. And, uh, and I can do the same thing for the x-axis. So I can just do this, get rid of this, make this a function of y and get rid of the absolute and that gives me the x-axis so that's good um, <clears throat> and now let's just first draw the actual the actual curve uh, so for that i can do a call plus equals i can use a smooth step for that if you don't know how smooth steps work and you want to know how they work i made a video about it check it out in the description it's a very useful function uh, and I'm going to do uv dot y minus bounds of the x coordinate. And the x coordinate, my uv dot x actually doesn't plug into this properly because my uv dot x goes from minus 0.8 to 0.8 over here. I made that in a previous video. I just have to remap it so that that. I have an x value that is 0 here and it's 1 over here. So let me just make that real quick. Uh, let me go over here and say, actually, let's put it up here maybe. Float x equals uv dot x. And my uvs, my input uvs, are minus 0.8 over here. So I just add 0.8 to it. Um, or uh, And then I divide it by the 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 range from here to here and this goes from minus 0.8 to 0.8 so i divide it by 1.6 anyways this is just household stuff so you don't have to worry too much about it just follow along uh, and now i can use that x coordinate and uh, now let's put in some values here and let's see okay so first of all let's just carve out an edge by putting an absolute around this <clears throat> All right. Okay, so now we have it upside down. So I'm just going to take this one minus out. <clears throat> so there are our bounces. And uh, let me also attenuate it a little bit so we can see them. <clears throat> All right. Pretty cool. And obviously we want the, the ball to follow that. And so to do that, so over here I'm drawing the ball. 
with an x coordinate and a y coordinate and so obviously the y is going to go up and down so the y coordinate has to be the bounce and the x coordinate is just my time so like that so now we have a little ball that bounces like that pretty cool all right so now that is one way of doing it but now let's say if i had a ball that needs to bounce many many more times like a ping pong ball on a on a slab of uh, of marble uh, then yeah I, I, I could figure out you know all the all the parabolas by hand and put them together by hand but that's very tedious and so let's try to make something better uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another function float call it bounce 2 that takes as an input dx and I'm going to try to figure out how I cannot how I can make an algorithm out of this and so let's look at this. So we like we have the we making the parabolas by using a, a start position and an end position and then drawing a parabola in between. So one good thing to start with would be to keep track of the start and the end. So the start for, and let's just look at the first parabola. So the first the start of the first parabola is at minus 0.5. The end at the first parabola is at 0.5. And then also what I want to keep track of is how far apart the start and the end point are, because that's kind of how wide, how wide my parabola is at the base. And so that's the width, and that is just the, the end minus the start. Okay. Um, and then what else do I want to keep track of? Yeah, let's just let's just leave it like this for now. So, and then I can say float val for value equals um, x minus start times x minus end. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So return val. So return the value. And then I have to go down here and say bounce two instead of bounce, right? Bounce two. Okay, so that gives me something. Um, and that gives me something negative because if I make a parabola just like that, right? X plus 0.5 uh, and times X minus 0.5, uh, then um, I get an upside down parabola. Um, so I'd have to turn that around. Uh, but that's that's fair enough. So we could just do minus and that is okay. Um, but what I want to do is I want to normalize this this parabola. So it's at, at a height of 1, right? So if I turn this around, it's at 0 0.25. And we know from the previous one, we know we could just do times 4 and then it is over here. Uh, but that depends on how far these points are apart, apart from each other. And so we have to figure out a way how we can always normalize a parabola like this, uh, regardless of where the base points are. And so let's think about it. So what we need to do in order to get this normalized is uh, divide this entire thing by minus 0.25, right? So we have to divide this entire thing. Let me just put some brackets around it. To divide this by uh, not that by minus 0 0.25. That is how you normalize it, right? And why is it by minus 0 0.25? Because uh, well, let me just divide it by one. Um, because that's the lowest point. So we have to divide it by by the highest or the lowest point. And so how do we do that? Um, well, what we can do is we can take the center like right in between the start and the end point and divide it by that, right? Because if you do, um, uh, sorry, no, uh, take the center and, and, put the, and put that point, which is zero in this case, into the formula itself. So let me take the formula itself over here and paste it down here. Because if you divide something by itself, then you get one, right? So that's why right now it's one everywhere. But we're just going to put not x into it. We're going to put the center of between between these two crossings, which is zero in this case. So zero and zero. Okay, and that also normalizes it. And now, if 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 we just put the center here, then that it works for it works for wherever your points are, which is which is pretty cool. So <clears throat> so let's try to do that. So let's calculate a center. 
And actually, I'm going to reuse it, so uh, I'm going to put it over there. And then over here, I'm going to say center equals, uh, it's start plus n divided by 2, right? It's just the average between the start and the end. That's the center. And then once we have the center, let me just put it up here. Now, once we have the center, we can we can normalize the value, right? We can just do, we can do val, um, we can do val. Actually, let me just call this bounce. And then over here, I'll say val equals bounce. I mean, that's still not going to change anything, right? Uh, well, I have to, <coughs> I have to define it, obviously, float. Uh, all right, where was I? Oh yeah, okay, so we want to normalize this, right? So, uh, well, first uh, we calculated the center, so now we divide it by um, the center filled into the formula itself. So I just take this entire thing, and instead of x, I'm going to put center. Okay, so now it makes it one high, and we already figured out in the previous bounce that we have to we have to uh, kind of attenuate it a little bit to, to be able to see it. Okay, so we can do the same thing over here. So uh, times 0.4. Okay, so now we have it attenuated. So great. Um, so that's one bounce. Now, how do we get the next bounce? Well, for the next bounce, we have to change the start and the end and the width and the center. So, so let's see. Well, the start of the next bounce is the end of the first bounce. So that's simple enough. Um, the end of the second bounce are, is, mm, well, it's the end of the first bounce plus the width of the new bounce, right? So it, like, like over here, like the, how far the points are apart, let's say they're one apart. Uh, well, then, then, then the new start point becomes the old end point, which is that. And then, and the new end point becomes the old end point plus the width. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and then we have to calculate the new center. And so the center already we have over here. We calculate the new center. And then, uh, actually, let me just put that val over here. Actually, let me put val here. Val equals zero. And then over here, I'm going to say val is the maximum of, of itself and the bounce. That's just a way to get the bounds in there. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, so yeah, I'm setting up the second bounce here. So for the second bounce, let me just copy this and put that over there. And let's see. And then after that, I'm going to have to bake it into the final value, right? Like that. Okay, so now we have two bounces. Great. So now we know that that, that works. So now I copied all of this extra here, but obviously we don't want to do it like that. So let me get rid of this second bounce here. And let me put this entire thing now into, into a loop. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, 4 int i equals 0. i is smaller than some number of bounces, and then i plus plus. And that's just going to make a loop. And then let me just indent all of that. And now over here, I can say int num equals, let's say, four bounces. And let's see if that works. Okay, so now we can't really see anything because these bounces kind of go out of the screen. Um, so because one thing what we have to do is we have to make the width, like the, the how, how long the bounce is, every new bounce needs to be shorter than the previous one, right? So, so before I'm, at, I'm adding this here to the end, uh, let me let me go over here and say make the sec make every successive bounce half the size of the previous bounce, right? So by multiplying it by one half, and so now you see this is the first bounce and then the second bounce, and then it still goes off because now like the question becomes like how how far does this bounce go? If every bounce if the first bounce is a, is a, is a length of one, the second bounce a half. Or let's say if the first bounce is a half length and the second bounce is a half of that, which is a quarter, and then an eighth, and a sixteenth, and a thirty-second. So if every second, if every bounce gets smaller and smaller, then how long is the entire, the, the entire string of bounces? Now that's that's a uh, 
that's a mathematical problem called a geometric series. Uh, and for, for bounces that are a half as long as the previous bounce, the, the, the length, the total length is one. Um, but, uh, because we have, we start at half a bounce, we have to add that. So in order to compensate for that, we have to say, uh, over here, we have to say x times equals 1.5. Just to kind of, uh, uh, compensate for that, for that bounce. And now we have bounces that will, like, no matter how many you put, um, there will always, f you can always fit another one in between, uh, because every bounce gets half as long as the previous bounce. Okay. Um, so now we want every other bounce to be also smaller, right? Like, uh, well, it's shorter, but also less high. And, uh, that goes at the same rate as how this width is changing. So the first time I get into this loop, my width parameter uh, is one, right? Because it's the difference between this point and this point. And so, uh, and then at the second time, it's one half, one quarter, one eighth, and so on and so forth. So we can just multiply the height of the bounds by the width to get it smaller, like that. And would you look at that? That's pretty neat. Now we have a bunch of bounces that are algorithmically determined. Uh, so now, like this, this size or this minification here, we kind of want to pull that out. So let's call this R. And over here, let's say float R. And then uh, I'm going to put that over here, R, and over here. And I'm going to say float R equals 0.5. Okay, that's great. So now we can change this. Let's, let's change to something smaller, 0.3, let's say. So now that works, but, but we kind of want to account for the fact that it's shorter now so that it, it you, that we're stretching, stretching the bounces all the way. So, so it fills the entire space. Um, and so the question is, uh, for the geometric series of, uh, a third, adding a third each time, like that, that one doesn't go all the way to one, right? So, uh, for the geometric series of, of halving everything, you start at one half, one half plus one quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth all the way to infinity goes to one. But one third plus one third of that, one ninth plus, you know, one twenty seven, like that does not go to one. And where does that go? Um, well, that turns out to go to, to this. So, so normally it's like one, uh, divided by one uh, one minus r. Okay, that's normally how it goes, but now we have to account for the first, for the first part, so we have to subtract 0 0.5 from it. And now we always have, uh, we have it fitting properly. And so let's look at this. Let's get the mouse involved here. Uh, so let's say vec2 m equals i mouse dot xy divided by I resolution that X Y so that just gives me a mouse, a mouse cursor, uh, um, a mouse coordinate that goes from zero zero to one one, and I can use that to drive something. So I can say instead of that, you can say m dot x, and now I can move this around, and this goes around in the opposite way. So let me just flip this around, and now we have something pretty cool. All right. I mean, you can still see we can run out of bounces, right? So, but we could just increase the bounces over here. So, say, give me 16 bounces. All right. Now, there's one little thing here, which is that at some point here, you see that it starts kind of glitching out. And uh, it took me a while to figure out why that is. And the reason why that is, is because inside of this loop here, this width it starts at one and it gets smaller and smaller, right? Each time it goes through the loop, it gets smaller by a factor of R. And, um, and that can get really small. And the problem is that if it gets too small, it, um, there isn't enough precision in the floating point, uh, in the floating point number. So it will just clip to zero. And if it clips to zero, then this, becomes a division by zero and division by zero uh, makes it glitch out, which is not good. So what we want to do to prevent that, we're going to say if width is smaller than some small value, so let's say 100, so this is just 
um, scientific notation for 0.01, okay? Um, but you can make it 1000 like this, let's say. Uh, then we just say, okay, break out of the loop. So we don't get to a division by zero. And then we have something like this. Pretty neat. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have been going for 26 minutes. Uh, so this was the second way to do a bounce. Uh, there is a smarter way to do this uh, that is less cost you less computation and get you an infinite number of bounces and it uses logarithms. Logarithms are really really cool um, but I will leave that for the next video so um, I hope you like this and uh, I hope to see you next time so please uh, please click subscribe so that you don't miss when I when I release that video which should be very soon and in the meantime, I wish you much, a lot of fun on Shader Toy and on Desmos. And I hope you make something cool and I hope you share it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that would be cool. Um, anyways, I hope you stay awesome and I hope to see you next time.